Yo, what's happening everyone? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this new Android Auto and go all over its new changes, features that they integrated, and uh, just do a brief overview of pretty much everything. So let's go ahead and get started. So this new version of Android Auto is already available. Everybody could enable this. But originally, as soon as you plug in your phone, it was supposed to give you like a little message right here. For some reason on my phone, it wasn't giving me this message, but you could manually enable the new Android Auto. So as long as you're on the latest Android OS, this is what you need to do. Quickly open up the Android Auto app, hit the three lines right here, go into the settings, and enable new Android Auto. And now when you plug in your device, you're now gonna get this new screen layout. So down here, we have a new redesigned taskbar or toolbar. And on the lower left hand side, if you tap on that, that's now our new home button. It will take us to all of our apps. The toolbar down here remain exactly the same with new icons and such. And when you tap on the little home button again, it will take you back to the previously opened app. And if the passenger takes the phone, they have full usability of the device. They're able to still open up third party apps right there without closing our maps app that we have in the background. So on Google Maps, you tap the arrow or anywhere in the blank icon around the map. It's going to change it to full screen mode. Nothing new there. If you tap on it, you can search for a new direction, see your recent, see categories, personal save like my work site that I can simply tap and head towards all the way on top. But something new that they recently added now whenever you type in the search results, the Android phone that's connected to the unit will actually display the Android Auto keyboard, allowing the passenger to insert the destination address and even the keyboard on this side can also type in and correct some stuff and just hit search when it's done i doubt it's gonna find anything from all this gibberish and tapping on the gear icon is the same thing we've seen in the past we have traffic satellite image mute settings about and that's about it and of course when you have to put a destination you can still use google voice assist to input the address so let's go ahead and select a destination and go over the new stuff they added. Start the destination and it shows us the ETA as well as the distance to travel. But if we hit the little arrow icon right here, we have new options to choose from. Similar to Apple CarPlay, we can now share our ETA if you're trying to meet up with your buddy at the same time. You can also add stuff to your route it's in case you have to stop by a gas station real quick. Restaurant, coffee shop, grocery stores, you could add these to your route. The show route tab will give us a brief overview of everything that allows us to see current traffic conditions and turns that we got to make. Then the destination tab allows us to add additional stops to other addresses that we need to stop by. And then the course of settings is the same one we saw when we hit the gear icon, which gives us control to enable satellite image as well as traffic conditions. So going back, tapping on the little home button, it will bring us to this new pixel style app icons right here. And if you may notice, on a toolbar, it gives us a street information we gotta turn to since we left our navigation on. It's gonna display our information right there. And if we enter a music application, it's still gonna remain right there. And in case you're coming up a turn, you can simply tap. It's gonna take you back to the navigation screen right there. You may have noticed we also have full music control right here where we could pause and play our tracks. And whenever we change to track, a little window will pop up right here where your notifications will normally be, allowing you to know what track is playing. And if you change windows, it's still going to stay right there. So no matter what part of the screen you're at, you're always going to see the track song right there. Now down here, you may have noticed that we have now a bell icon for our notifications. Right now, there's nothing here, but when you have a notification, it'll have like a red dot. Depending on the notification, you can simply swipe to clear. And if you ever find yourself in a group notification, a group chat, you can mute the conversation right there on the screen, as well as hit play if you want your Google Voice Assistant to also read the message. Then next to it is our Google Voice Assistant. When you tap on it, you can ask Google any questions or requests you wish for it to do. You may also just use your voice and just say the phrase, hey, you know, the word to launch it hands free. So depending on the music platform or the audio platform application you like using to stream all your playlists and such, all your common available options, you go back to browse your library of many different tracks you have. You can search by album, all that stuff. And if you may have noticed, there's audio wave icon right here. And when you tap on it, it'll take you directly back to the track. Now, when you hold down the home button, it doesn't take a screenshot. I thought it was, but it doesn't do that. It just says save feedback. I don't know what it means, but if you guys know, comment down below. Because I checked my device a few times, there's no screenshot on my phone on Android Auto. So if you may have noticed, there's new applications that Google integrated. One of which is podcasts which you have full views of all your podcasts, everything like downloads, new episodes, 
and etc. And then you can also browse all the available episodes including the really old ones. And when you play it, you may have also noticed that all the audio platforms now have the same theme where the album art is in the background blurred while the album art is right next to the title. I think this layout looks really clean and it's very similar to Apple's change as well. And you also have your useful shortcuts like to skip 30 seconds or go back 15 seconds as well as the audio status right in the center with the pause and play wheel. So this top row is always going to be our four recently opened apps and all of our other applications are going to be organized down them below. So some of the other new apps are really just shortcuts. If you see the app with the little circle underneath, it just launches your voice assistant. So if we click on calendar, Google will read out what's on your calendar for today. There's one entry for today. If you tap on news, Google will give you your news headlines. Here's the latest news. And play it from the audio platform like NPR news. And if you tap on the little Google icon right now, because that's playing, it's going to take us to the audio interface with the same music controls we've been seeing. Other shortcuts is also like the weather shortcut. Google is just going to tell you to the current weather conditions. And then we have reminders where you could actually create a reminder right then and there. What's the reminder? Another new application is a setting application, which disappointingly just takes you to the settings on your phone. Then the last icon over here I want to show you is the exit. When you exit, depending on the vehicle, it's just going to take you to your vehicle's homepage. And to go back, just tap on Android Auto. Then the last application I'd like to quickly show you is the phone app. Here you find all the common things you find, but you also have a full dial, like you typically always had. And if you're wondering if you could change the wallpaper in the background, unfortunately you can't. I tried, couldn't do it. And whenever you scroll up and down, there's a little scroll bar right there. And on the top, both right and left hand corners, you have the cell phone status of your cellular device, including battery. And on this end, we have our clock. But yeah, other than that, that's basically everything there is to know about the new Android Auto. My overall thoughts about this, I like this interface. I think it's a lot better than what it used to look like in before. Before it kind of looked cheap, looked ghetto in some ways, just didn't look very elegant and would ruin the look of the vehicle's infotainment system itself in my opinion. But this layout's a lot cleaner, it's more pleasant, and Google is definitely heading towards the right direction. But is it better than Apple CarPlay? Stay tuned for the next video as I'm going to go ahead and compare each of these devices and talk about their pros and cons. But that is going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Greatly appreciate if you actually leave this video a like. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see the Versus video that's coming up next. But uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.